All right, let's begin. Oh, so it looks a bit weird over there. Let me just stretch that ever so slightly. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Cool. Good evening, guys and gals. Uh, no audio. No, there should be audio. Um, definitely should be audio. I've checked it tonight. <laughs> How are you all doing? Hope you're doing well. Um, I've cut off the beginning of the chat, so I'm going to have to do my greetings from um, from the beginning of one of the raffles, by the looks of things. Oh, music loud. Okay, hang on. I can never win with the, with the audio levels. Um, so the tickler about like set 50... I'll, I'll come to that in a minute, yeah. I'll, I'll, let me go through the greetings, and then I'll... I'll uh, I'll just explain that a little bit. I did mean to do a, some a write up about the uh, uh, about the quiz this week, but I just haven't had time to do it. So I, I will get onto it at some point. I mean, there's three and a half months left, so it's fine. Drinking cider tonight. Ah, that's good. All right. So apologies if I miss uh, anybody from the beginning. Um, I have some of my chat is cut off, so. I don't have the full chat history. Um, <clears throat> so who we got here then on my list as it stands. So Microman, Steps, Mr. G, Doxter, Fitrend, Amok, Prince Phase, Browse, Seven, Quadrasol, Welcome, uh, Vostiar, True Tonis, uh, Acme Finn, Welcome, Mr. G, Welcome, Amok 64, I think I already said, but a welcome again. Uh, Docs to me, me Dolph, Click Tech Kev. Uh, remember, this is the last time to gamble big wins for Saturday. Yes, good point, Aquafin. So, yeah, make sure you, uh, by the end of this stream, you have uh, 20, 22 and a half uh, thousand points. So I'm going to go over the rules again uh, in, in a moment because I'm about to make some slight adjustments to the rules. Uh, but the cost is going to be the same. Um, but there is a small, small change to the way the rules work. So um, I'll, I'll explain that. Uh, hey, Russ and Mills, welcome. Mythical Duck as well. Prince Faze, welcome. Thank you for the host, Andy, as well. Appreciate it. And welcome, Andy. I've not seen your name on here. You must have been running the raffle right at the beginning. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much everybody. Spec comes through as well. It's, it's, he, every time I say that, Pixel, Pixel, Paish. I don't even know how to say that, but welcome, Warlock. Kelso, that's everybody, I think. Yeah. Welcome, welcome everybody. Um, all right, so first of all, let's go over the competition roles. Um, uh, so yeah, so first of all, I've made a, a link to the competition in the chat, so you can do a compo now, and it should give you a link to it there. So if if anybody needs to know the link, that's you can post, you can do that. Uh, and, and point them in that direction. Thanks for the host, Prow7. Appreciate it. Uh, so just to reiterate the real steps asked me just before the stream started, um, is is the game, is the competition a two kilobyte competition? Um, no, we, we haven't put a size limit on it. I mean, technically the size limit is four kilobytes, but it's unlikely anybody's going to use four kilobytes because you would have to do some pretty nifty stuff in order to get it Um to, to use the entire memory allocation that you've got. So the the rule the, the simple rule to remember is that um, your game should load in under uh, 1000 hexadecimal. So it should load in under this address. And at no point should it write to any memory address at that point or higher. Um, so if you want to crunch 32 kilobytes into four kilobytes, that's fine, but you can't unpack it outside of that four kilobytes. You, you the only time you can write anything outside of that is if you write into um the IO area. So if you write into uh color RAM or uh to sprite locations or sound, you know, D00, whatever. 
Um, and, and even then, I'll be making sure that those writes are done to IO RAM and not to, you've not switched out mm -hmm. IO RAM because uh, there are some sneaky tricks you could try and pull. So I'll, I'll be checking those. Um, I will post something soon um, going over these rules, uh, going over some tips for using more than. So the, the, the most basic will be to create a program that never, that starts at 0801, like, like most assembly programs do with a little basic upstart. Um, and just doesn't exceed uh, 1,000. Uh, the more you explain the rules, the less they understand. Well, it's it's pretty simple, really. You you write a, the most simple version is you write an assembly program that never goes past 1,000 in memory. That's the most simple one. You can complicate it a little bit more by trying to use screen RAM at 0400 to store some code, and you can complicate it even further by avoiding the kind of um, on I, as i say i'll write i'll write a a, a decent um a, a decent kind of guide to the three different ways three or four different ways of doing it um it's no it's not as complicated as it sounds it really isn't um and i'll show you how to check in vice as well whether you're um whether you, you pass the rules or not um so yeah anyway that's the the competition so i wanted to go over the um the rules again for the the giveaway tomorrow uh or saturday before we start coding I'm doing check night tonight by the way um so i had a look at stream elements which is what we're going to use to to do the giveaways um and stream elements has um why not just make a compo where all memory addresses must be odd numbers and you have to have one hand behind your back <laughs> that's the next competition that's the next competition the, the the competition sounds harsh, but if you it's only harsh if you're trying to use all of the memory. If you don't use all of the memory, you can just treat it like a two kilobyte competition. If you treat it like a two kilobyte competition, it's fine. Um so it just it just um it just depends on how you approach it really. Uh, and how kind of how clever you want to be, which is why why we did it that way, to give to give the experienced coders something to kind of get their teeth into um but to give the beginners a chance a chance as well so in other words a, a you know a basic 10 or 20 liner would be would be a perfect entry um and wouldn't wouldn't be a problem um anyway the uh the stream elements giveaway stuff so um i looked at how the giveaways work on stream elements and what i originally was planning to do was to to leave the the ticket purchase open all night and then just every hour just draw a, a winner from that but unfortunately with with um with stream elements you have to close the draw in order to draw a winner so i can't leave it open all night so the original plan was to leave it open all night charge 1500 a ticket uh, and just do three draws throughout the night based on the same pool of entrance um because i can't do that what i'm going to do instead is just ever so slightly change it um, in that there will be three separate draws. Each draw you will be able you you each draw will be open for an hour, in which time you can purchase tickets. Uh, after an hour it will close. I'll draw a winner and then I'll open another one, and that will happen three times. Um, because of this, the ticket price will be reduced. The tickets will be five hundred each. Um, so in order to enter all three draws, you would still spend fifteen hundred per ticket um so the cost will be exactly the same it's just it's going to be it's going to be spread out throughout the night um and and i'm, I'm just moving the time from uh so that they're an hour apart so I'll, I'll start the draw as soon as the stream starts um on saturday i'll open the first prize draw uh so you can buy tickets then at half past 10 we'll do a draw we'll draw a winner uh then we'll start another one and you buy tickets again and then we'll draw at 11 uh, half 11 and then we'll close uh, that one will close and we'll do a final one which will get drawn at half past 12 so there'll be three separate prize draws um um yeah anyway the 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 rules are all in in discord i will uh, make sure that's a, a a chat command on the night hopefully it's fairly straightforward um in in terms of kind of cost it's exactly the same as it was before it's just you have to spread it out throughout the night now instead uh, it'll be 15 ticket maximum and um 
subscribers to the channel will get a double chance to win so your tickets are kind of worth two if you're a subscriber unfortunately i can't make that work for um patrons unfortunately i do apologize for that there's nothing i can really do about that other than to manually kind of uh, give extra tickets somehow and i don't even know if that's even possible so um it's not going to be uh for patrons unfortunately but um i think i think most people here are probably sub to the the twitch anyway instead but uh the chances will still be high i mean you'll get 15 tickets compared to if you're a regular on the channel uh per draw compared to newcomers you may be able to afford three or four throughout the entire night so you'll be buying 45 tickets over the entire night as a newcomer will only be able to buy four so even if you're not a sub you've got 10 times the chance of a newcomer uh, if you're a sub you've got 20 times um Cool. Can people claiming for shimmy shillings each and every stream get less change to win? Less chance to win. Can people claiming? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there. I'm like, let me let me add your uh, ten thousand points. So you'll all get ten thousand points now. Um, but there won't be a, there won't be a similar giveaway. Um, Oh, uh, what's that? Oh, Andy, thank you very much for the gift sub, Andy. Appreciated. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, and welcome to the subs, uh, Digastic. Um, yeah, there there will be no uh gambling, and there'll be no ad points at the beginning of the stream on Saturday either. The only way you'll be able to earn points. Um, other than the standard methods is through the quiz uh, and the race, which will be run on half uh, half hour intervals instead of 15 minutes. Uh, just to, because uh, the quiz is, is kind of important to the stream. I'm not going to get rid of that. And I, I think a, a non-regular would struggle to, to make enough money. So um, uh, certainly if Hayes and Steps are around, I don't think anybody's going to kind of uh, come in and suddenly win all the quizzes. So which is their, probably the only chance they've got to make serious money, unless Turrican goes on a winning streak. Right, let's start the races on that note, uh, and let's crack on with the, the stream. I'm really looking forward to Saturday. It's going to be good fun. All right, let's make sure I'm caught with all the chat. I don't know why that's weird. Cheers, Amok. Appreciate it. Thank you for the bits. Thank you very much. I tried to find that um, Bourjon or Bourjon, whatever, you, I don't know how you would pronounce it, um, wine, and I couldn't find it. Um, not from like supermarkets anyway. So I, I will order some, but it's probably going to be after Christmas now. It sounds like it's just another kind of Bordeaux, though, from a similar region. Same same region, in fact, I think. I think it's a smaller area of the same, same region. So. Um, yeah, but yeah, exactly. It's, it's a region in France, so it's just a. Uh, you, I think you can get, I think you can get wine with that name on it instead of Bordeaux. So, uh, oh, I missed what the what was the quiz? Oh, minor forty nine er. Oh, God, the hype train again. <laughs> Thanks for the bits, Gareth. Appreciated. Okay, so we're doing Czechanoid tonight. Um, from what I remember last time, uh, we were, oh, I was doing the collision. That's right. Let's just start this up and we were going to do the masking next. So that's probably what's, uh, what's going to be going to be next. Oh God, that's bright. I mean, let's get into the game where it's less bright. Uh, classical boy showing pastor green. Okay. I, I will, I will try and check them out. Oh, hang on. Let me turn the music off. Uh, I finished with work from now until New Year. No, I'm not. I've still got work on uh, tomorrow. Uh, I've still got four days, I think. Uh, thanks for the uh, resub, True Tonys. Thanks for the bits, Kenneth Mirror. Uh, and thanks for the bits, Me Dolph, as well. Yeah. 
and thank you guys as well um <laughs> and coming wine bits cheers doxter i appreciate it thanks steps as well oh god the, the hype train is annoying isn't it i mean it's good because it pays for the stream it pays for all these prizes but but it is it does <laughs> it, it does kind of all come at once uh, but it's appreciated. It really is appreciated, guys. It, it all goes towards the um, towards the stream anyway, so it's, it's all good. Um, yeah, I, I, as I was just saying, I'm. I, I want to thank you guys as well for for a brilliant 2020. It's been it's been a lot of fun, um, and you guys have kept me sane. You really have kept me sane. Um, I think if it wasn't for the stream, I would have gone absolutely mental. Um, so thank you for that as well, um, and I hope I've helped somewhat towards doing the same for you for you lot as well okay so there's two things we need to do i remember now so what, what first of all we need to we need to make this mask as it goes over at the moment i've deliberately put it in front um so we can see where it needs masking so you can see here we need to we need to mask as we approach this area uh thanks for the oh <laughs> Amok and his gift subbing again. Cheers, Amok. Thank you very much for the gift subs. And congratulations for the gift subs to Dr. Goggles, Kindergarten Kitten, and Jersey, Jersey Saw. I like that. Kenneth Mirror and Thalamus. Oh, and thank you for the bits that are about to come with a what looks like a crazy long um, text to speech from Hayes. I'm interested to see what that's going to sound like. So the other thing we need to do with the Checkanoid stuff is to make these uh, power ups actually spawn stuff. So there was a limitation um, of just one power up per screen. So we need to just change that so we could have more than one. All right, here we go. What's this text-to-speech? <laughs> oh, it's interesting. Oh, it's going to keep doing it, isn't it? God damn it. We need to... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, thank you for the... Well, I'll, I'll thank the other ones when they happen. Um, Oh God! Really, really do need to limit haze. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, it didn't quite work out. I'm, I'm assuming it was supposed to be some kind of noise. It sounds like it's just saying Zephyr over and over again. Uh, thanks for the bits, Fitrend. Appreciated and thank you for the for the sub triple air. Oh triple air, hey, welcome, welcome. So uh triple air is I'm assuming that's Gareth. Um is the original dev of um of Checkanoid, so uh no pressure, no pressure at all. <laughs> um <sighs> God, I'm getting through this really nicely, so you've been lurking for ages. <laughs> Here comes the pressure. <laughs> okay, so let's let's uh, have a think about this masking. So what I recalled was we defined some rectangles. So we defined two rectangles. I, I'm not sh exactly sure how whether it was one rectangle here, one here, or whether it was one big one and one small one here. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Um, but what we need to do is there's a sprite that sits over um, over the main player. And what we need to do is we just need to basically draw black over it, um, depending on where we are in, in that rectangle. So in order to do this, we need to know um, a few things about, about the player. In relation to well, we need to know one thing about the player in relation to this rectangle. First of all, are we are we are we well two things? Are we are we inside the rectangle? Have we have we touched the rectangle? 
um, which should be pretty easy because we're already doing um, some lookups for that. But we can do another one which detects. We'll have to do a rectangle check, I guess, against the player for each rectangle on the screen. And the other one is is how far into this rectangle are we? Um, and then we can draw basically two. I need to think think about how to do this. Yeah. You call it Seekonoid, which everyone hates. But if you're saying Raf's name properly, it's Czech. Yeah. Um, I think I used to say it. Um, I think I used to say it Seekonoid or, or Seconoid. Um, and then somebody corrected me because because Raf's name was Checo. Yeah, so. Uh, thanks for the bits, Tron6502. Appreciate it. Um, hmm. Just trying to think how the easiest way to do this masking is going to be. So the other way to the other way to do it, and I think that this is actually what I was thinking of last stream, is to have a a, a solid solid black square that that basically lives in the rectangle. Yes, this this is the way to do it, and then you you move it, but constrained within the rectangle. Let's go down that route. So so basically, if you imagine this screen here, if I'm here, the black the black rectangle will be in this position here. And as I move across, it will move over to here. As I move over here, it will move over to here. Likewise, if I'm here, it will move up and down, but it will always stay constrained within this rectangle. Um, and then if I enter it, that means that it will suddenly start masking the player. So let's let's try that out. Um, okay, so first of all, let's just create a, a masking sprite somewhere. Um, actually, let's just do it in the sprite sprite pad. It's probably easy enough. That's bright. Let's open up the right one. Oh, good. I bought some shoes from a drug dealer. I don't know what he laced them, but I was. Just... That's actually not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. There, there's worse. There's been a lot worse. So. Also, I can't wait to get over the stream this weekend so I can finally shave this beard off. It's driving me insane. I'll, I'll trim it at least, not shave it off. Uh, oh, thank you for the for the hype train sub stuff. Appreciated. You guys are all too generous. Uh, let's find the right folder so many projects now it's ridiculous uh sprites i think it's just test sprites at the moment isn't it no it's not that one where did i put it i thought it was in there but maybe it's not assets assets there we go i have no idea where i put them now ah oh, yeah it was this one okay Okay, so one thing we were going to do was move um, this from behind the player. So I'm going to use this sprite as the actual uh, as the actual thing. So all I'm going to do is just color it in in black like that, um, and then we'll move it around within that rectangle. So that's going to be our little little challenge is to get it moving around inside there. Hopefully, it, hopefully it works fine. Hey Zapatelia, welcome. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the weekend. I, I like doing the giveaways, and I, I'm really I'm I'm intrigued to see what everybody is gonna do with uh, what the winners will do with their um their Pi four hundred. So it'd be good if whoever does win it can you know uh, inform us all what you intend to do with it. Uh, well, let let me know now. If if you were to win it, what would you be doing with it? What well, what would your plans be for a Pi four hundred? Uh, just while I export this. <laughs> hey, Mike. Retro machine. 
Amiga emulator, install RetroPie. Yeah, Pico Eight. Yeah, that, that, I see. I'm using, or I will be using mine as a as a Tick Eighty machine. Um, just waiting for them to update the. Uh, oh God, where is it? That one here. I'm just waiting on them updating the. Uh, um. Uh, the, the bare metal uh, version of it so i can run it on it it doesn't work at the moment on, on it works on a pi 4 but it doesn't work on a um pi 400 weirdly okay let's take a look at that i'm, I'm not sure but i think that might actually i'm going to shrink this down a bit as well so it doesn't brighten in my face Is it still possible to make a Pico 8 machine which boots directly in Pico 8? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it is for Tick 80, so I'd assume you can do the same with Pico 8. So the, 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 there are bare metal frameworks uh, which basically just install um, the things you need to run um, uh, C compiled things, basically. It just installs the kind of bare minimum you need to, you know, need to run things uh, so you don't have to have an OS over the top. Um, it doesn't seem like it's that straightforward to do, but um, yeah, there you go. You can see the square now. So we're going to move that square. At the moment, that's going behind things. Uh, actually, it's not. It's, it's only one. Oh, okay, it's changed directions. That's why. Um, yeah, I think I think the easiest way to um, to do the bare metal is just to find someone else who's done it. You, you can probably do it yourself if you know enough about C, um, but it doesn't seem like an easy thing to do. Okay, let's uh, let's remove this square from the player now because the player has this square behind it because this is the shadow. Uh, well, not the shadow, the outline. Basically, we're going to remove that. We don't need it anymore. So let's start with that. Let's make some room. Let's go get things on the way. What's the Hovey song got to do with Christmas? Windows XP, God. I don't miss that at all. I remember loving it though at the time. It was there was something cool about having a, a blue um, taskbar and a green button. It just felt like new and modern and cool and stylish, and um, it really wasn't when you think about it. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did rock at the time, but when you look back at it, you think, "Oh, oh okay, it was gaudy. It was horrible." Uh, okay, so the multiplexer is probably something to do with it. Uh, I'm not going to mess around with the multiplexer too much, but what I am going to do is I'm going to move any code in the player which affects two sprites. So I'm going to move that. So look, see here we've got data frame plus one, yeah, ship background black. So basically going to remove this bit of code here. I'm just going to comment it out for now. I'll I'll delete it if I need to, um, just so I can reference back to it um, shortly. But uh, see what is this position play x plus two oh this is because we've got fractional values okay so we don't need to get rid of them but these we do need to get rid of so what this is doing this is just stopping the um uh the renderer from from changing uh, uh well the player code from doing anything with that sprite uh, and we're going to move that into a, a separate area uh, for the rectangles. Uh, so it looks like we do everything in zero and then it's probably copied to one at the last moment. So yeah, there's one there. Let's get rid of that one. Don't need that. There's one there. It's changing directions. Yeah, see here it's it's copying data from player positions into actual sprite positions here. So let's get rid of that. I 
I think that's it. I don't think there's any more in here. Yeah, okay, so that's that's good. All right, let's see what that looks like. I'm not sure what this is going to do. It's probably just going to leave a sprite in the middle of the screen. Um, but what we should see is when we move over this area here that we no longer have that outline. Yeah, so you can see it looks, it looks like we're going behind, but actually we're in front of everything here. Um, but this is what we want to avoid. We want to avoid being able to see it there. So that's the kind of aim here is to, to get rid of that. Um, first of all, I'm going to set the start screen to here so I don't have to keep moving to this screen. Uh, where is the start? I'd be in game loop, maybe. Yeah, that one there. Okay. So this will probably, what was, there was an effect that you needed to enter the screen for. I can't remember what it was. This seems to be fine anyway. All right, cool. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to find where these rectangles are created. Uh, I'm going to make sure there's a rectangle update routine as well. Um, because this doesn't have to happen on happen on every screen, I'm going to make it part of a screen update loop. Um, the, the individual screen update loops, which are in... I can't remember where they are now. Maps. So what happens when you don't touch code for two weeks? I've noticed as well, over the course of this year, it's getting harder and harder to keep up um, with code. Uh, thanks for the hosting, Lau. Appreciated. Um, tonight's wine is indeed cider. <laughs> no wine tonight. I've got two bottles ordered for the weekend. I've got uh, uh, another French wine, another uh, Bordeaux, um, actually, because I couldn't find the other one. Uh, so I thought I'd give this a, this a try because I actually really enjoyed the Bordeaux. Um, last weekend and i've got a bottle of white as well um just a sauvignon blanc to uh to just round it out a little bit you bought a wine advent calendar oh that's what i should be doing that's what i should be doing oh damn i'm i'm upset now <laughs> i'm upset i should have been doing that Oh, well, yeah, I, I bet you can highly recommend it. That would have been perfect for me, actually. Ah, oh, well, there's always next year. I could get one now and catch up. <laughs> oh, my God, that would be a lot of bottles of wine, wouldn't it? Oh, it's quite hard. Yeah, I bet it is. I bet it is. Um... That's a great idea, though. I, I kind of want one there. Okay, so this is this is how we define these areas. We have these passable areas. This is this is basically saying ignore collision for these areas. So we we define rectangles with these. Um, so let's just because I cannot for the life of me remember how any of this works. So we're gonna have to go and find all the code first. Oh, there's a passable areas. Here we go. There we go. Update. Oh, see, we have got an update routine in here already. That's pretty good. Um, so I think what we would need to do here, uh, thanks for the follow stuck thread. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Mid-size and whatever half bottle is, uh, 375 milliliters. Oh no, three, is it 750 or is it 700? I think it's 700 i think i think sp is right i think it is yeah oh now i'm confused is it 750 or is it 700 well when you get a glass you get one yeah you get 175 mils don't you so in a pub so it would make sense for them to sell bottles with 700 mils so you get four glasses out of a bottle yeah uh, there's 
one glass bowls. So okay. Your bottles are seven hundred and fifty mil anyway. Okay. I don't trust bees in Finland anyway. It's all overpriced. It's ridiculous. So I think I've mentioned before the most expensive glass of wine um, I've had that wasn't like a, a fancy, you know, like an a, like a off the expensive wine menu. Just a, a a normal crappy house white cost me fifteen euros um, at Helsinki Airport, and it was it wasn't even nice wine, and it was a small glass of wine as well. 15 freaking euros. I realize you can buy, um, I realize you can buy like, you know, glasses of wine in restaurants that will cost you like 60, 70 pounds a glass. But um, this wasn't, this was in some shops. I think it was like a sushi bar or something in Helsinki uh, airport. Yeah, I know it was a, uh, it was a, <laughs> it was a bad choice. It was a bad choice, but I really wanted some wine, so I didn't really have much choice. Okay, so what we need to do here is, um, if we add stuff on a screen like this, then what we should also do in our in our update loop here, um, we do animations here. So all we need to do is make sure we call uh, passable area updates. And what this is going to do, this is going to ensure that that sprite um, exists. Uh, well, actually, we could probably do that in the add the passable area. So whenever we add one, um, nah, we'll, do, we'll do it in the update here. Uh, we just need to make sure that that sprite is turned on and then it's moved into the right position according to that rectangle. Fourth to washing the US being five minutes per pool league. Glass of beer is very different, kind of sometimes called a sleeve. Wow, okay. Um, okay, so we're gonna this is what the update's gonna do. So the update is going to take our um our rectangle area and add a sprite. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we we add a sprite to it. So um i'm actually going to do if it's not equal to zero comes here yeah okay so this is just making sure let's put a note in here if no rectangles then exit otherwise we need to activate sprite otherwise ensure sprite ensure last sprite is active it's barbarian isn't it yeah And so we're going to do this with uh, Sprite 1, was it, I think? Yeah, in the multiplexer. So that goes basically like this. We can we can copy some of the code out of here just so we can see how it's done. So it's, yeah, this here basically is what we want to do. Um, we can probably set these somewhere else, actually. Let's set these in uh, init. So whenever the rectangles are turned on, then we automatically initialize this. So let's just make sure that's initialized in here as well. Uh, passable areas in it is not called. So let's have that in. Uh, we can also set the color in here as well. So I adapted this very multiplexer for uh, the Mega 65 uh, yesterday, and it looks really good. It can handle 64 sprites, no problem. And it's barely touching the raster time at all. Uh, it looks really good. I'll be doing a little bit of that on Saturday as well. I, I was going to do it tonight, but I haven't touched Checkanoid for two weeks, so I did want to go back and uh, come back to this and make sure I was doing some stuff on it. Okay, so we set the frame, we set the color. Uh, that's all we need to do in the init. And then in here, we'll just set position. So for now, I just want to make sure that it's enabled. Um, so by default, we'll make sure it's off. 
which we do by setting ff into the y position it's a strange way of doing it but that's how this multiplexer works if you set a sprite that far down the screen it will just be ignored by the multiplexer which means we also need to do that in the reset so that when we go off screen it's it turns off uh, and then otherwise we will draw it at a particular pace place on the screen so for now what i'm going to do i'm just going to make it appear in the top corner so we can see if it if it correctly appears and disappears um so i'm just going to set the positions uh like so should be enough i think that and that should make it appear uh, oh actually we're going to need just to make sure as well okay let's give that a quick test so hopefully what we should see now is when we're on the screen with the rectangles we should see a black rectangle in the top corner a black square in the top corner um and when we move off the screen it should disappear so it should appear kind of over here it's probably going to cover a little bit of the text and and a bit of the background Is that failing somewhere? I want to put some data Y. Okay. I got those values wrong. Oh, X pos and Y pos. Okay, fair enough. It's quite repetitive, isn't it, the barbarian music? Oh, this bit's different, though. Very memorable though. Uh, there. Well, I don't remember this bit. <laughs> Probably because I died by the time it would have got to this. So. Think of a lot of your game logic comes from modern thinking. Would your PS PRGs be quite different years ago? Um yeah i think so um i mean they certainly would have been different if i had done them because i i think i've learned game programming see i'm not seeing that black rectangle at all oh hang on yes there it is so you have to actually exit the screen for it to appear so it's not there but it is here so it's correctly determining that there is a rectangle on the screen um yeah as i was saying i think i think a lot of what i've learned about game programming has come over the years um so things like entity systems and stuff like that is something um that i wouldn't have really thought about when i started doing commodore 64 um back in my teen years um but came with doing things like quake mods and uh half-life mods and things like that that you kind of learn about um things like entity systems and and um having different update loops so like having a, a, a tick rates for various things so like having which is actually something we don't really do very much in the C64, but um, although I think we do it in Pick and Mix, uh, where you have a different tick rate. So you have like a, a, a player control that runs at 60 frames a second, uh, but then you may have a, an AI loop that runs at 30 frames a second. Um, so those are the sort of things I wouldn't have really thought about back then. But I do now. So yeah, I think I think it would have been quite different had I, had, had I done these things. Um, plus... I, I've got the benefit of the internet now to teach me um, things that I just had no chance of ever knowing back then. Hey, CC former welcome. Congratulations, by the way, on Neptune Lander Game of the Year for 364. Well deserved. Um, yeah, and, and tick rates is one of those things that really um, even, even non-developers should learn about if you if you play a game online if you play a multiplayer game online you should understand what a tick rate is because it has a massive effect on on how a multiplayer game works so, so a game like call of duty um has your has your visual update um and then you have the, the server tick rate so a very low tick rate can mean that um you won't get informed of changes on the server at the same rate that you're getting uh, the same rate you're seeing things which has the effect of um if you've got a fast firing gun for instance and you fire three bullets for every tick rate on the server then what can happen is you can take three bullets 
like you can get hit by three bullets, but you won't know about it until the server tells you all at the same time. So it's like three bullets instantly hit you and you get like insta deaths and stuff like that. Um, some games are good at handling it. Some games are really, really bad at it. So uh, it's the only time maybe you can take entirely. <laughs> I've not done any Unreal Engine 4. I'd like to do a little bit of that. I like the um I, I like do like the look of the editor. I did uh, I used to do a lot of mapping uh stuff for uh Unreal and, and games like that back in the day. So when uh the the reboot the first reboot of Unreal Tournament came out, the um you know, when it was when they moved to like the whole new engine and and, and stuff. Because you had Unreal Tournament and then you had Unreal which was like the single player version. And then there was nothing for a few years. And then they brought out Unreal Tournament 2000 and whatever it was. Um, and I learned to use that that um, level editor and it was really, really cool. I was really pleased with being able to uh, be able to make games, make, make levels for my, my games. Uh, yeah, I think it did actually, yeah. I think I think Unreal did come first. Sounds like rubber banding in online racing games. Yeah, so rubber banding is because of the predictive nature of uh, of networking. Um, so obviously you can't uh, if you're running your game at sixty frames a second, you can't be telling the the server sixty times a second uh, where you are uh, and which direction where you are, which direction you're moving in, and what animation you're 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 currently which animation state you're in. Uh, that's just it's too much for the server to handle um so what they do is they use a predictive model so um if you uh thank you for the bits by the way microman if you um if you start walking north at a particular speed then the server will say okay that player was walking north at a particular speed um and until you tell it again what's happening that is what the server will assume that you're still doing so every other player will see you moving north at that particular speed until you update the server and tell it now what you're doing again so rubber banding is when you tell the server one thing and there's a delay there's some lag between uh, you telling it and when you tell it again everybody sees you going in one direction but in the meantime you've actually changed direction and you've gone somewhere else so when you update on the server you get a rubber banding effect where you move from where the server thinks you are to where you actually are um, it's particularly bad in racing games, yes, because of the speed that people move, but it can happen in uh, first-person shooters and stuff as well. Um, and again, tick rate has has an impact on that as well. So, so high tick rate games tend to have less rubber banding than um, than low tick rate games. A nightmare to code to get sleep. Yeah, it is. That's it's why high tick rates are really important in in online multiplayer games i think um okay right so we've got a rectangle so let's move it now to to match the player so here's where we're actually just making the the sprite uh positioning the sprite but now what we want to do is is instead of just positioning it we need to work out where it is in relation to whichever rectangle we're looking at so we've got these rectangles here uh, they define an X, a Y, a width, and a height. These are done in character space. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert this into um, into sprite space, basically, so it matches our, our player. So let's start by doing that. Um, so we need to loop through all of these. Um, so we're going to start with... Start at zero. I've got, to, I've got to try and remember that there's no Z register. I've been doing mega 65 and i've got used to using z register for stuff now hey sean welcome uh, 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 uh oh one entertainer who's done that <laughs> 6502 kebab god damn you damn 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 Okay, so we're going to go through each of the areas and um, we're going to continue until um, we reach. Actually, we can probably go backwards through this. It doesn't, doesn't really matter, actually. Let's do it this way because then I don't have to do a, a subtract one from it. Okay, so 
here's where we're going through. We'll put a skip here just in case we need to skip. And this is where we need to calculate. So first of all, what we need to do, let's move this over here because I'm going to need zero page probably to, to use some stuff. Eleven sixty four still down after being. Oh yeah, it's a good point. Anybody who um, has a password on Lemon sixty four, an account on Lemon sixty four, I would especially if you use um, the, the 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 password anywhere else, I would make sure that you change that password on every site that you use it on. Um, and when Lemon sixty four comes back on, I would go and change your um, your password on there as well. Because uh, it was hacked, and um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a massive fan of Lemon sixty four, but it is a, it is a bit shitty that it's been been hacked like that. I would have preferred it was CSDB that got hacked. Someone on Twitter said it was a worm. Okay. Yeah, change Lemon Amiga as well. So it's, yeah, not just Lemon 64, it's Lemon Amiga as well. I mean, I hope that nobody is reusing their passwords. Um, it's 2020, guys. You should be you should be um, a unique password for every website. And if you struggle to remember them all, use a password manager. There's plenty out there that are free. Uh, yeah, I use LastPass. Um and they're good, and I definitely recommend them. Um, you will you will up your security several several hundred times by using something like that, um, because you can generate a very difficult to crack passwords um, very quickly and easily. You don't have to remember them; they're automatically filled in for you whenever you whenever you visit a site, um, and you don't you don't fall foul to these whenever they um, uh, whenever there's a breach on a site, you're only breached on that one site. You're not breached on hundreds of sites like some people get. Um, okay. Uh, right, so we need to calculate. So um, let's start by grabbing the X and the Y. Uh, so we need to work out um, basically a, a, a start and end position, uh, whether or not the player is within that area. So... The way we need to do this is if we imagine, let's do, let's just do a little uh, doodle, ASCII doodle up here. Say this is our rectangle. Let's just look at it from a, a horizontal position. This is our rectangle here. Um, let's fill it in so we know how big it is. Right, so that's our rectangle. Uh, we need to make sure that if our sprite, let's define the sprite as two characters like that. If this overlaps with this in any way, then we need to we need to move our, our rectangle to a particular position on there. Um, ideally, what we should be doing is we should be um, taking our sprite position here, working out our boundaries. I think that's probably the easiest way. So we work out where the start boundary is and work out where the end boundary is. So let's call this let's call this the start x and end x. And then we need to move our rectangle. So we've got a little rectangle inside here that we need to move right up to the edge here. If this player is anywhere outside of this, the moment this player moves beyond this point, so the moment this player moves to, say, here, then we need to move the rectangle along with it. Uh, and as we approach this end here, we need to lock it to this end here. So let's try and work out the values of SX and EX. Uh, let's create some temporary stuff in here to store them as well. So let's actually just call them rectangle SX. And rectangle SY. Uh, this is probably going to be uh, a 16 bit value. Well, technically a nine bit value. So let's make it a word for now. Uh, and the other thing I definitely recommend as well. E oh, yeah, there you go. 6502, as already mentioned, it is, is two-factor authentication. Anytime you can um, use two-factor authentication, do it. Because then even if your password gets hacked, um, there's there's one extra step that the the, the, uh, the, the, the attackers have got to go in order to use it. Um, 
so yeah, two two factor authentication definitely. Um, if you can get one that comes on a separate device as well, um, so you sometimes get ones that come with like little RSA keys and sort of things. They're even more secure than the ones on your phone. The ones on your phone aren't bad at all, but um, maybe you can get one with a separate device entirely. Then, then you know nobody can. You know, it's not connected to the internet or anything, so um, it becomes even more difficult. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a couple of authors. There's Authy. Um, there's the Google one as well. Google's got a fairly decent authenticator, um, but I think you can get. I think I think both of those do a physical version of it as well. All right, sorry, I'm getting really sidetracked by all the security talk. It's kind of a new kind of favorite thing of mine at the moment. Okay, so SX. We need to work out what SX is. So in order to do that, we just need to grab the X position here. Um, so Pretty easy. I'll give me a data x, and we need to convert that into sprite space. So we need to multiply it by eight. Uh, so we'll sh shift that to the left three times, and then we need to add eighteen, which is the border. Now, the thing with this is this could leak over into uh, a ninth bit here. So what I like to do instead is to times it by four add half of this value in instead and now i have a half value so this will be going from a zero up to uh what would the half value be uh well it, either way it wouldn't be all, all nine bits it's it's going to be like 172 or something like that and then once you've got this you can you can um start here first of all by storing the uh, the upper byte of this. Actually, you can do it here quite easily. So if I did, yeah, so if I just do another shift here, like so, and then store that here. So we've got our lower byte there, but the carry will be set if we've leaked over. So we can just do, that there we go um of course the other way we could potentially do this is by storing it first and then rolling it uh but it's it's about the same in turn but this this just looks a bit easier to look at i think so this uh gets sprite x uh, sprite space x So let's let's just do one simple check now. Let's 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 build this up as we go along. So what we'll do is we'll compare um, the sprite space of this position. We won't do more than one rectangle. We'll do one rectangle at a time here. So we'll just stop the loop from going on, and we will compare uh, this value to our our, sp our sprite position. Um, Superman, yeah, I thought it was. Um, uh, surely, surely the passwords are only stored as hash to the key passwords in clear text. <laughs> yes, <laughs> don't set your password to MAGA twenty twenty. Yeah. Uh, it happens more than you think. Hackers use to email to try and request the kind of pay. Yeah, oh yeah, there's all sorts of crazy ways that you can um you can get you can get uh, more details from somebody. And one of the most common attacks um that you will see um is called uh, credential stuffing, which is when an attacker will get a list of um emails and passwords. Um, that somebody's hacked from some breach somewhere. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> thanks, me, Dolph. Appreciated. Uh, thanks for the good tunes. Um, yeah, so an attacker will will obtain a list of passwords and uh, uh, and, and, and corresponding emails that have been hacked from somewhere. So say, um, I don't know, say uh, the Sony PlayStation hack, right? Somebody somebody gets a list of uh, emails and passwords, uh, and they go on the dark web and they buy them from there. And then what they can do is they can set up a script that will go to a website and it will just try all the combinations. It will just go into a into a um, say Gmail or something like that, and it will try all those emails with all those passwords. And eventually, one of them will work. And it's called credential stuff, and it happens an awful lot. Uh, it's something we have to deal with um, almost every day, really. So this is why you should never use your passwords in more than one website because that's what people do. They will they will write scripts that go and do that. Hey, monsters go boom! Welcome. And yeah, enable two factor authentication and everything. That way, even if the credential stuffing works, they've they can't go any further. So, can you get that to guess my old Gmail account and email with a password? <laughs> uh, okay, right. Uh, let's make this this work. So, we've now worked out where the the sprite position, uh, the the rectangle position is here on this edge here. So what we need to do now is we need to check our sprite position. And if our sprite position is more than uh, this value here, then we need to move this sprite over. So let's let's do this in stages. So first check uh, left X. So we need to load our, actually, do we, uh, do we have it as a player position? I'd rather refer to it as player X. Yeah, we do, okay. And it's got a fractional value here, so we need the second one here. So uh, we need to get that value, and we need to check that that is indeed um, well. It, if it's if it's less, than we skip. Let's call this skip left x. Okay, so so we compare that against rectangle s x plus zero. And if it's more than it, then we'll go to here. If it's less than it, we need to also check um because we need to check the upper upper byte as well. Hang on. So I need to check a 16 bit value against a 16 bit value. Okay. Okay, so it's quite easy. We'll check. So we check the upper byte first. Um, if the player is above this upper byte, we're definitely to the right of it. First check left edge. So check we are to the right of the rectangle's left side. If this check passes, we definitely are to the left, to, to the right of it. Uh, otherwise, we need to check if it's the same. We will come down here and we will check. Uh, oh, actually, no, this is, uh, damn it, we need to, because if this is the same, this will also go down here. So we kind of need to do this the other way around, unfortunately. I hate, I, this is one thing I hate about this, but it's fine. Whoops. So this time we check in the left edge against the player position. If the left edge is more than the player position, then we come down to here. No, we come to this one. Check again, hang on. If the left edge is more than the player edge, then we're not, and we come down to skip left X. Yeah, okay. Uh, then we check the player uh, position lower byte against the rectangle. We can probably do this the other way around as well instead of complicating things. 
yeah, let's keep let's keep it consistent. So now we're comparing that against. It's probably an easy way to do this with subtractions. I'm sure I, I'm sure I did this last time, didn't I? Yes, I did this last time. I'll get it working, and then I'll simplify it. I think that's the way to do this. Need more booze. That's what I need. So I've been thinking a little bit about whether or not Saturday is going to be my last stream of the year. I think it most likely is going to be um, just because I've been really, really tired. Um, I think I could do with uh, a week or two off just to kind of chill out, do some stuff for myself um, and recuperate a little bit. Okay. Um It's starting to the one where you win the raffle. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so now we're checking left again against the player. If this is uh if this is more then yeah, okay, that's good. So we skip like that. Okay. Otherwise we're definitely on the right side of the rectangle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to match the player. So instead of setting these values here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... This can definitely be be done in a much neater way. So actually, we would start by... First lock the sprite to the left edge. This is going to have to be simplified. Uh, almost definitely. This is this is far too complicated already. I can tell. I'm not going to mess with the Y yet, um, but I'll I'll leave it locked here for now. But we're not setting any values for that yet. Okay. So this then becomes these two values need to change and they need to match the player now. Hopefully this isn't too bad performance wise uh, i think it should be all right because it's only going to happen twice two or three times in a frame uh, depending on how many rectangles there are uh, and it's not uh, it's, it's a couple of lines at most uh, and I, I think this can be simplified because we did do it on the last one so okay i'm going to try this now i think what we should see now is that the the rectangle will basically track the player's horizontal position uh, as long as the left side of the player is within the left side of the, the rectangle if that makes sense so i have to go off the screen unfortunately come back in right there we go so here is here is the edge of the the area and you can see as i move around it's not doing anything but the moment i come inside here it should start tracking and it's not okay So that's not working correctly. I mean, it's, it's lined it up up there, but it's not track. It should be tracking the position of the player right now, and it's not doing. Okay, so let's. Um... First of all, I'm going to make it a different color so it really stands out. It sounds like a. It sounds like faulty towers, and I'm sure I've said this before. I have said that before. I definitely remember saying that before. They've, they've nicked it from Faulty Towers for definite. 
Yeah, deja vu. Definitely. I definitely remember saying that before. Okay, so I've made it red so it stands out now. Okay, so we get down to here. Let's put a breakpoint in here and make sure that those values are... Why not another window open? Make sure it's getting those values correctly in here. Um, I'm not sure which the first rectangle is, actually. Let's take a look. Is it the small or is it the big one? Okay, let's move it so it's the big one and not the small one. Because that's a whole different thing, the second one. I think this code is going to be relatively compact, complex, but the end result should be quite nice. Um, why does that not load? Oh, because I'm pressing the wrong button. I like how you guys find many, many, many versions of Entertainer. Okay. So, according to this, if I go and have a look at B2. Uh, okay, we haven't worked out the Y, but that's fine. The X says it's at 38. So, the edge of the screen is at 1.8. Uh, so, that makes this 2.8 and that makes this 3.8. So, that is correct. So, the rectangle X and Y is correct. So, that's good. And we can definitely see that lined up there. Although, what's that? It's drawn something there. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Oh, I think it was that ball. It's just been misplaced for a frame. Okay. Um, okay, so that, that value has been correctly calculated. So then we need to make sure that it's been tested correctly against uh, the player. So let's take the MSB check out. Let's just check the LSB first. So we want to check the 38 against the player. If it's if it's more than the player, which it will be until the player goes past it, uh, then jump to here. Otherwise, we need to do this bit here. So let's put a break point here. So we should only break now once we go past the red square. God, I should probably start on the other screen, actually, thinking about it. Oh, no. It's locked up here for some reason. Why is it locked up here? Because it's locked up. It's not actually broke. It's locked up. Um, interesting. Oh, it's because of this here. Let's get rid of that. It's just gone into an infinite loop there, that's all. Did you miss the break? No, I am going to go for one in a minute, though. I will let the... Uh... I'll get this bit and then um, work, and then I'll, I'll go for a quick break. Since I've stopped smoking, I, I go for breaks way less than I did before. Right, there we go. So as soon as I go past it, it does come to here. Um, what we should see. Uh, okay, I mean, it's not following at all because I'm I'm stuck in here, but it has definitely reached that break point. So I would, I would expect this to transfer over correctly to this now. Ah, but... I oh know, because it's just a rectangle. So we're checking the rectangle... Yeah, okay. Okay, this should be fine. All right, let's try it. Not for quiz addiction, no. <laughs> Sometimes I think these kind of things that need a little bit of um, thought around them. Um, 
code bits that they, they can be a little bit um mundane probably not the best thing to to watch ah there we go see it's tracking there so that will track until i hit that edge and then it will stop so now that's tracking that left side of the of the um of the rectangle so now we just need to make it track the other side as well so i'm going to go for a quick break now um just for five minutes uh, and i should be back shortly i should leave you with the quiz uh, i'll be back in five minutes bye bye and i'm back i was hoping someone would get that i was going to be very disappointed if they didn't <clears throat> i love that game best best top down racer on the C64 for a long shot. That ball feels flat for some reason. It's weird. Yeah, it is. Mis misformed bottle. Never played it. Oh, it's really good. Really good. It's hard though, but it's good. Okay, uh, let's let's add the msb check back in again now uh it shouldn't matter over this side of the screen but we need to put it in anyway um which is just this bit here just to make sure that that wasn't what was breaking it uh because there's a possibility it could have been not that you would have got it no <laughs> probably not probably not sean um That's one of the things I'm going to spend the the time over Christmas doing as well is trying to sort out a new uh, new quiz for the new year. I don't know how close I'll get to completing it, but I'll I'll do my best. Um, yeah, probably we'll have Nintendo. It'll be up to that era, I think. I think we're going to call Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, see, it's, oh, it's not there because I need to go up to the screen. I think I'm going to call Nintendo sixty four and. Uh, PlayStation, Saturn, um, as as the the kind of last era, uh, and then anything before that. So, um, your Mega Drive, SNES, uh, Mass System, Nintendo, Amiga, Atari, Spectrum, things you know, a selection of things from from that. Yeah, Amiga as well. Yeah, uh, Dreamcast. No, Dreamcast is is too uh, too modern for it. I think. So it won't be any Dreamcast ones. Um, Dreamcast would be easy anyway. I mean, the Dreamcast comes up. There's like three or four, <laughs> three or four games that that, uh, that everyone will recognise immediately because <laughs> there weren't that many. Yeah, yeah. Dreamcast is too good. Yeah, Dreamcast is too modern. Uh, okay, I don't know why that didn't move. Oh, I think I'm doing this this check wrong. Let me just. Uh, oops. Take a look. Uh, so it works if I do this. Uh, because if, yeah, okay. So uh, am I storing that correctly? Yes. So that would be zero. And this would also be zero. Oh, actually, this this does need to be the other way around. So only if, so these can be the same, but if it's more, more than not the same. Okay. So if it's, hang on, let's think about this. I suck at sixteen bit comparisons is one of these one of these things that I really struggle with. So I'm checking if I want to check if from the rec the edge of the rectangle is more than the, the player. So in order to do that, what do I check? I first of all I check the top. Hang on, let me let me just write this down here. It's real simple. So if I want to check, right, this is my this is my source. This is my target. I want to check if it's s more than t. Right. 
I just need to write it down otherwise. So in this case, S is more than T because this is MSB. Okay, so. So is more, that would still be more if it was that. So it would be branch of carry clear here. So this would be branch of carry clear to the skip. All right. And then here it would be. Oh no, hang on. Uh, let's let's call it no. There we go. So if this is like that, so it should be carry clear. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying. I always struggle with this. I'm just trying to work out which way around I should be doing it. Just being, I am being really dumb. It's, it's one of those, it's kind of like a weird blind error I have with, with assembly for some reason. Uh, so not that bit there. So it's this bit here. So basically what I want to check is, is uh, my rectangle, which in this case is S, is my edge. Oh, so it's, I've got these the wrong way around, that's all. Because I actually want to check if this is more than this. Yeah, so I just need to swap these around, that's all. I need to swap these around and change. That's branch of carry clear, that's all. Okay. Do you know, I think everybody has this. There's always some things that, in code especially, there's just certain certain things that you just, no matter how many times you look at them, no matter how many times you do them, they just do not sink in. Uh, and this is this is one of them for me. Sixteen bit comparisons. I can do I can do the mathematics super easy, and the comparison is just the mathematics. It makes no sense. Just keep that there for reference. Just one of those weird blind areas. Uh, I get it a lot with um, uh, with HTML as well. I'm always having to check things in HTML, and the other one as well. I always uh, screw up is array functions in JavaScript. So which, cause some of them, like you've got splice and slice and some of them return an array. Some of them return, uh, yes, yeah, so that's working there. Some of them return, um, a reference to the original array that's now been changed. And I always have to go and look those up. It never sinks in no matter how many times I do them. Yeah, exactly. Some mutate, some don't regular expressions. I don't mind regular expressions. I can do. Weirdly, they they've stuck in my head. Um, I have no idea why, but they they have yeah substring versus substra yeah exactly. There's another one. Yeah, it's it's just there's certain things just will not stick in my head no matter how many times I do them, and I will do them hundreds of times, and they just will not stick. Uh, and that's what this is one of them comparing comparing sixteen bit numbers is. Um, it's always been a weird area for me that for some reason, but yeah, that's working there. Okay. So now we just need to do, um, the other side now. So we've locked it to that side. And what we've said here is, um, is our, is our player, um, it's our player to the to the right of that area. If it is, then we can we can move on to the next check, um, and the next check is is basically going to be doing. Uh, let's put the skip left. Yeah, let's let's put this all together. We can tidy this up later. We're going to have to kind of rearrange this a little bit, but just make a label uh, two five seven three five. I I don't know what it is. It's but I I still wouldn't remember what it what it does. That's the problem. Just it is it's one of those weird things. Uh, I think everybody has it with something in code somewhere. Um, 
Yeah, regular expressions is a weird one. You'd think that would be one that I forget, but for, for some reason that sticks in my mind. Um, I don't know why. If it's a hex number label, you remember what it does. Uh, maybe, maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we're checking the other side of the rectangle. So this is a little bit different because what we now need to check is, uh, let's, let's right now, now check right X. Check we are to the left of the rectangle's left edge. Oops. Let's put this on a other line. Uh, so check we are to the left of the triangle rectangle's right side. Now, the reason why this is different is because now we need to add the width of the player in as well. So um, we can do this with um, the full width of the sprite. We don't need to know exactly how many pixels it takes up. We're just doing it based on full sprite widths. Um, the mask is a full sprite width, so um, we'll do it this way. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a similar comparison, uh, but now we're checking not that the... Uh, Actually, we can, yeah, we'll check the, so we just need to do the inverse check here. Um, or do we? Hang on. See, again, I'm getting confused by it. So let's just write what we're actually testing here. So So here, what we're checking is is player x plus twenty four less than rectangle x plus rectangle width. So we need another value here. We need the we need the rectangle width. So we need to calculate that. Um, let's just call it rectangle W. We're obviously going to need height as well. And these could be bytes. Actually, let's, let's call it SX2 and go that way because then we don't actually have to add the, um, have to actually add the, the width to it. We can do it automatically once up here. So we've got our rectangle SX here. We've already got that value calculated. Uh, so we now we add the width. We'll do that by getting data dot width. Oh, this is a fast one. Uh, we multiply this by eight. And then we can just add to this value here. I thought it was going to go in Isengard then, it didn't. So one of my first thoughts is we can probably memoize these values because there's no point in these being calculated every single frame. Um, so I'm just going to put a little note up here to uh, mem uh, cache them, like pre-calculate. For now, they can go here, but we'll probably do it in the in the add function up here. Is whenever we whenever we uh... actually no, because when uh, I'd have to have a look at how that works, but we might have to like pre-calculate um, these values and put them in in here instead instead of here but we can come back to that if we need to uh need to optimize it we might do might not i don't know i don't know what we'll do just want to get it working first uh this is kind of the last remaining uh complicated piece of generic code that's going to be used across multiple screens um after that the most complicated stuff is going to be quite specific to one or two screens like lasers or swarms and things like that um, Okay, uh, 
yeah okay so now we have uh yeah so now we have the the far side in here so so that's sx this is sx2 so what we can do is we can um to check the the other way around how would we do this simply so if if this is less than this then this cannot be more than this value here so we obviously we need to add our 24 here oops okay so if our msb is less than uh, the MSB of the rectangle one, of the rectangle edge here. Oh, but you see, this is, oh, this is, com this is gonna complicate things massively now. Because we need to, we need to actually add this differently, so fuck's sake, okay. I don't like how complicated this is getting, but it's going to be worth it. It's these stupid attentions to detail that um, that make me take too long doing things sometimes. Uh, we just need it in TX, so uh, it should be fine. So um, this is our, our temporary player. In fact, I'm going to call it PX for player X. So what I need to do is I need to take these two values. I need to add 24, store that at Oops. Again, this could probably be pre-calculated in the player routine somewhere um, instead of doing it each each loop of this um can someone please explain the race to me i don't understand all the numbers oh that's how much people are betting on on each of the uh competitors so um for instance acmuth in there has bet nothing on the top one five 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 on the second one nothing on the third one 32 on the bottom one Is because what people were doing before is they were typing one one line, one comment for each one, and it was it was starting to uh, get a bit kind of full. So it was it was spamming the chat a little bit too much. Okay, so that gives us rectangle px, which we can then check. So now we can actually do this the same way as we do this one by flipping these around. So. That's not two four, it should be one eight here. Let's do one eight. This is the width of a sprite, so that's why we're doing that. Okay, so now we can compare these the other way around. So what we would do is we would check that one, compare that to this one. There we go. So first we lock the sprite to the left edge of the rectangle. Then we check is the player more than that. And if it is, then um, we do we do this check here. Um, if the player is not outside it, uh, uh, okay, so let's call this. So if the if the player is not within it, then uh, we should go to skip horizontal here. 
Um, and actually skip horizontal can be where we lock the left and right. So there we go. OK. Sort of done. There we go. So in this case, if we if we fail to be yes, okay, so we can actually skip horizontal here. Otherwise we need to check. Um, we need to check this side. So I think the skip left and right is wrong here. Yes, yeah, so a skip horizontal here as well. There we go. Otherwise, we are within inside the box. So what we need to do is we need to set the sprite uh, to match like this, but we need to make sure it never exceeds uh, SX2 here, which is calculated up here. So we need to make sure that these values do not exceed this value here. So. First of all, let's just get rid of that. Set sprite to play pause, ensuring it never exceeds the left side, uh, the right side, sorry. So the moment it is going to exceed the right side, but hopefully we should be able to see um, it following at least a little bit. Let's try it out. So it's failed there. What's failed? Oh, what's going on there? Can't build it. Oh, PA player. Oh, okay. Player PX. Oh, yeah, I've done this here. It should actually be rectangle PX. Thanks for the follow, 76 Iceman. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're well. Ah, the birdie song. Okay, I have to go off the screen again. Okay, so it should follow us along, which it's not doing, so we've completely failed. Let's have a look. So step through it. So pre-calculating the values. Check left, are we to the left? Uh, otherwise, we come to here. This will skip if. So, this is checking the right hand side. So, let's just comment that out. Just make sure my rearrangement of the code, make sure that this still works. Should be fine, I think. Let's try it. Oh god, it's going off the side. I need to start on the other screen. Okay, so it follows across. Okay, so the right hand check is wrong at the moment for some reason. Let's have a look why. So first of all, this is just calculating our, our PX values. Which is just the player position. So that should be fine. Ah, there we go. We need to check the, the right side of the rectangle. I was checking SX, uh, the first SX, not SX2. SX2 is the right hand side. OK, 
God damn. Okay. Yeah, there we go. And it should stop. Yeah, so you can see as soon as I... Actually, it's it's kind of stopping a bit too soon. It should should stop following me once I go to here, but it's stopping a bit too soon. But um, you can see it's kind of doing the, its job now. So I need to work out why it's stopping too too quickly there. Oh, actually, because it's not it's not plus twenty four at all. I don't need to do the PX thing. Yes, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do this at all. So change that to this. Uh, thanks for the follow, Ray Smurf. <laughs> I like that. Good name. Yeah, don't need to do this at all. I'm just going to comment here though, because I think I might need something similar for the um, the adjustment of the, the rectangle. Because what it's going to do, it's going to follow me all the way outside instead of clamp into that area. It's going to follow me outside of that. God, I should get that. This is why I should start on this screen, because then I can grab that speed power up. It makes it a bit quicker. So it should. Oh, I see it's not following me now. Why are you? What have I done? Uh... Oh, because that's the wrong way around. That's why. A SID request case sensitive? No, they shouldn't be. Um. The best bet for searching for a SID request is to go to Deep SID uh, and use uh, use the path on Deep SID. <laughs> okay, sedative. So if I go on this screen, if I start on this screen, I can at least get this quickly, and then I've got the speed power up. There we go, it's following, and it should follow until I leave that box completely, and then it goes back. So all we need to do now is clamp it on this side to make sure it doesn't exceed this area here. Okay. Let's, let's actually call it clamped to the right side. Okay, so this is... This is looking a bit better and it's getting a bit neater as we go along. So, so this is where we will need to do a little test. Uh, so we need to test. Um, so we can we can apply this value here, but then we need to check this position against. Um, actually, is what's the easiest way of doing this? Okay, we don't apply it. What we'll do is we'll we'll now test. Um, uh, is player X uh, more than uh, rect SX2 minus 24? Or the other way to think of this is, is player X plus 24? Uh, actually, let's just do it that way. It's fine. Okay, so this is the check that we're doing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put player. Um, this is going to be our, our, our rectangle drawing position here. So we're going to take this. And I'm going to store it into here. Store that into here. them for a second oops okay so this is the position that we're going to actually apply but first we need to check that against um our rectangle left side here uh hang on
no, let's yeah, let's do it this way. So if we do plus twenty four, it's more than that. It's so good, it's so good. We've got we've got gambling because this is boring as hell. Uh, okay, so call it one eight here. Okay, so now we've got our position that we then need to check. Yes, yeah, so we can do this check here. So the accumulator is now this one here. So if we, oh, uh, yeah, it kind of has to be separate, doesn't it? Okay. Check the upper byte first. If it's not, we jump to here and we just store the values as they are. Um, uh, so, Okay, easiest way to do this is to subtract the 24 off again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, this value here. Store it there. And then we just need to, I'm going to use self mod here, sod in. So, okay, yeah, one eight. Otherwise, what we do is we come here and we load that with three zero. There we go. I'm sure that's way more overcomplicated than it needs to be, but um, whatever. Oh, <laughs> who got that one? Mr. G, nice. Oh, no, Hayes. <laughs> that's really unfortunate. You're never, you're never going to get that one. Never going to get that one. Uh, oh, where's that? Not? Oh, because it's there. There we go. So this is the more complicated of the two di of the two kind of axes because because of the MSB. The other one should be a little bit e easier. Why did we get it again so soon? Um, because I think it was before we did the uh, before we did the the locked um, quiz version. Oh, it kind of did something. I think I got my subtractions wrong here. Is it that simple? I feel like I'm overcomplicating this bit completely, but the list is wrapped. Do you think it has? I mean, we'd have to do 400 quizzes. <laughs> hey, Zappy, welcome. You're getting later and later. <laughs> It wrapped ages ago. I did it. 
God, have we done 400 already? Wow. Oh, I see. No, that's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. That hasn't worked. Okay. So let's think about this differently. So um, okay, let's get rid of that and let's get rid of this. So if the player is beyond Yeah, if the player is beyond that that edge, then what we actually need to get is it's this one. Otherwise, that one. Okay, cool. Get there in the end. It's going to be a lot more fun when we get into the uh, individual screens because each screen is going to be in, like a unique little challenge, which is going to be kind of cool. I'm looking forward to that bit. Okay, follow, 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 clamp to the edge. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So we're only doing one rectangle here, which is kind of problematic at the moment, but uh, I'm going to have a think about that uh, at a later date. But let's just get the, the vertical stuff working now as well. So the moment we're only applying um, horizontal movement, uh, which after all of this ends up here, and we've done the horizontal. It's a lot of lines, but it does the job. So now we need to do the vertical. So in order to do this, we need to do the same kind of calculation, but with the sprite space Y. And we've already got stuff set up for that. We don't need to do 16 bits, so that should be a bit easier, uh, which means we don't need to do this quite the same way, which means we don't need the zero on the end. We don't need this bit here. Um, we still multiply it by eight, but this time, because it's sprite space Y, we need to add three, two, which is 50, which is the border at the top. Um, and we need to add that height to that as well. Uh, and that'll be SY. Becomes SY2, there we go. So that's a little bit shorter now. Um, but again, this could probably be calculated ahead of time. So all of this code here, I think, can be part of this section here where we add data into here. Uh, no reason for that to be separate, I don't think. Oh, raid. <clears throat> oh, caught my finger on something then. Hey, Dylan BT, thank you for the raid. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome everyone that's come along with uh, Dylan Beatty. Welcome. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wrong hole. Welcome to my Thursday night Cider and C64 mission. Uh, what, are you, what are you up to tonight then, Dylan? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, it's always interesting to know what people are doing. Just finished Advent of Code in JavaScript. Oh, cool. 
Today's was gnarly. <laughs> and you've you've come along to a you've come along to a six five oh two assembly stream. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, for those those who uh, haven't been here before, I'm Chalan fifty k. I do uh, I do assembly uh, programming um, on most of my streams. Occasionally, I may do a gameplay of something or other, but it's very, very, very rare. It's mostly it's mostly assembly language. Uh, on Thursdays, I do uh, this game, Checkanoid, um, which is a C64 game. Uh, on Saturdays, I do another C64 game. Uh, thanks, Dylan Beatty, for their follow as well. Uh, so the the this game is is a, a port of an existing game that came out on. Um, various platforms uh this year and the year before uh thank you for the follow catatoon uh it's not starting either oh it's here that's why uh so this came out on various platforms and i'm converting it to, to commodore 64 at the moment um the game i do on saturdays is is a bit different it's a game that we've kind of collaborated on over the course of well it'd be closing on an 18 months now really um and it's it's getting towards the end. I, I did want to finish it this year, but I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, and then on Tuesdays, I do some uh, Game Boy color coding as well. Um, usually, um, there's been a few few of those missed recently, and, and I did some mapping on the last one, so I didn't have to code because I really don't enjoy coding Game Boy at all. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I do here. Uh, I'm glad to have you along. Hope you enjoy what you see. Um, to be honest, most people come here and they just gamble all their shillings, all their all the channel currency on the little games we've got down in the corner and and against each other in duels and such. And then they've got to be careful because I'm doing a I'm doing a Pi four hundred giveaway on. Uh, on Saturday, where I'm going to give away three Pi 400 uh, um, starter kits, uh, and it's going to cost shimmer shillings to uh, to enter. So uh, there's a few people on this stream who are quite liberal with how quickly they use all their um, um, <laughs> I can't say my favourite thing about this stream is always the chip tunes. How <laughs> good. Uh... Yes. Oh, Sean went all in. Wow. How does one procure a raffle ticket? So it's going to be uh, on Saturday. Um, there's going to be three raffles. Uh, one at half past 10, one at half past 11, and one at half past 12. Um, the raffles, the tickets will be available to buy for an hour before each of those they cost 500 shillings each and you can have up to 15 um, so in order to enter the maximum number 15 in each of the raffles you need around about 22 and a half thousand um points and the winner will be drawn there'll be one winner drawn on each of the uh half past 10 half past 11 and each winner will receive a pi 400 star ticket this is just the pi 400 i haven't got the star kit here everything you need to to build yourself a little retro retro computer uh hey tinspin hope you're doing well <laughs> oh no <laughs> steps steps be careful Oh, steps, man. <laughs> You've got a hundred shimmer shillings. What are you doing? You've got literally half an hour. Uh, no, you've got about an hour to get your get your points up again. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so the um, there will be no normal um, normal uh, shilling award at the beginning of the next stream. Um, there will be no no gambling features on the next stream, um, just to make sure that there's you know there's no way newcomers can suddenly earn loads of shillings and compete against the the people who've been here uh, since the beginning. 
Um, the races will be on uh, and the quiz will be on, but less frequently. So there will be a small opportunity, but I'm, I'm going to try and limit it a little bit uh, to give the give the regulars a, a better chance. Uh, you'll also gain double um, double chance per ticket if you're a subscriber to the channel as well. Um, okay, let's do the vertical check now. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do these two checks but now we're checking top and bottom so we'll do this here so first check so this is now top x are we to the right of the rectangle so are we below the rectangles top so what do we need to know here we need to know is player y more than rectangle sy we don't need to check the upper bit we only need to check the lower bit so we can just check player y uh it is still plus one and we compare this to sy which doesn't need to plus zero here at all that's it and then we've put skip vertical here looks right to the top edge will do so then this becomes sy and this becomes y pos here and we don't need this here there we go uh, and then we'll have vertical done here so just basically duplicate what we've already done just simplifying it for um the vertical vertical checks uh now check bottom uh, and this is y not x Check we are above the rectangle's bottom. And so here we're checking is rectangle SY2, this one here, is that more than uh, player Y? So again, we can move these, we change this to SY, don't need the zero here, change this to Y, change this to skip vertical. And there we go, that's that piece. So then all we need to do is we need to do the clamping. Um, so let's just copy, let's copy this entire clamping system down and work out how that would work for vertical. Okay, so it's right to player pause, ensuring it clamps. So let's let's change that to player pause X, and here we want to change it to player pause Y, ensuring it clamps on the bottom edge. So we're checking is player Y uh, plus twenty one, which is the height of the thing, more than. I think that's why, which means we don't need to do the MSB here. We just need to take player Y. Uh, let's make this PY. Probably reuse that that one there. We don't really necessarily. In fact, yeah, let's let's reuse that. There's no reason for, to use another byte there when we can just do this. Because these are calculated values as we go along, so. Okay, so there's our PY value. Again, we don't need to check the upper byte. We only need to check the lower byte. So PY against SY. Okay. So we don't need to do that. We just need to do the Y pos, and we just need to subtract that from it. Otherwise, what do we do? We take a player Y and we store that at Y pos. That should be enough, hopefully. Hopefully that's going to follow us around that area now. It's taken most of the stream to do, uh, but I think we might have it working now. So let's have a look. So hopefully this follows us left and right, which it is doing. You can see it's clamped to the top edge of that rectangle there. 
and you can see oh actually it's not so it's not working that way uh, but as we come in here it is definitely following us uh, but you can see here vertically it should be following us and it's not doing so there's something a little bit wrong here it clamps to the top edge but the moment we go inside it stops following us and actually it's actually picking the wrong value completely there so let's have a look why that is so this is where the clamp should happen um, okay so we should be taking uh PY should be the player Y plus 15. So player Y plus this 15. Let's say this is 21, really. But yeah. If that is more than the. Oh, because this should be SY2. I believe. Yes, they should all be 2. That's why. There we go. Uh, good night, Gareth. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, having to go off this screen all the time is annoying. Okay. Box is following us. Clamps to the edge. And perfect. That's following us spot on. So now if we go in here, you see how it's going to mask us as we move in? So now we're being masked. Now we're being masked all the way. Actually, it's it's just a little bit too, not quite masking us all the way down. So I might, uh, or is it actually? Maybe it is. Well, let's let's try it. So let's set it to black and put it behind everything now. Um, so first of all, let's make it go behind things. Uh, where's that going to be? So that's D01B, which is this one here. Uh, and we want to set it to go behind things, I think. Uh, and I can't remember which one is behind. I think it's that. Let's let's try that one. No, it's not, is it? It's zero is behind things. One is in front. Okay, let me just check that. So actually, this aura is not needed at all anymore. Um, because everything should be behind and then this will, will work oh no so it was right so that is going be wait what oh no because they're in front okay so everything needs to go behind like that there we go and now if I go into here set the sprite oh pardon me the sprite color to black we should hopefully get the masking behavior that we want for one rectangle it's not about oh it's not about every rectangle at the moment it's just the one but it should be enough for us to uh to begin okay so i do need to leave the screen and come back in which is slightly frustrating but okay fine so now you can't see the rectangle but what you should see is it should mask as we go in here now and it's not doing and it's not doing because we're in front of it so we need to we need to switch the two sprites over <laughs> god damn it uh oh man that's painful all right so every time everywhere i've got a plus zero here this needs to be a plus one Ah, oh, that's annoying. I could probably switch these over actually in the multiplayer, but let's let's obey the kind of the rules of the uh thing. But yeah, that is annoying, isn't it? Such a simple thing, but um You have no idea what that means. It means, yeah, the layers are just the wrong way around, but uh, because it's all coded, unless that's not what you were talking about. Also, is that, yeah, I thought so. 
not that. I was going to say you don't care, do you? You know nothing about the code. You're just here for the gambling. Oh, you mean what I'm doing? You actually really did mean what I'm doing. Oh, okay. The sprites are drawn in an in in a particular order. Um No, no, <laughs> sort of. Uh, but basically, the that sounds like a bit like Mario. Uh, but basically, these two sprites are the wrong way around. So instead of masking it, it's just put a black box behind it, which is completely useless to me. Which means I've got to go through here and change all the plus zeros to plus ones. Jeez, everything there, those don't count. Right, I think that's everything in there. Sure, bloody hope so. At least it's fairly easy to check if I've got it wrong. But now I need to do the same thing in here, So, but the other way around. So all my plus ones need to be plus zeros. When they're related to the multiplayer, so those aren't, those aren't, these are. as well it's just a pain in the ass that's all but hopefully i've limited it to these two areas and there are no other areas which you'll see now anyway might work it might it might go completely uh might go completely wrong oh god what's what's happened I think Sean has been writing the jokes for, for Shimmer Bob. Okay, that's good. I'm not seeing the black rectangle, but it should. There we go. You see how it's masking us now? Perfect. So we should see it as appear as we go up here somewhere. There we go. See us kind of pop out behind it, but... Oh, masking is working. Yay. Quite a simple system, uh, but it does work. So uh, this is where where it gets tricky. How do we how do we do the same thing with two rectangle areas? So we've got two rectangular areas here. How do we decide which one should be controlling it? So the first thing I I, I would suggest is that what we do is we overlap areas. So if you've got an area there's an L shape. So this is the shape that we've got at the moment. It's kind of like this. Uh, I don't know why I'm tapping that out, but yeah, it's it's kind of like that. That's that's the shape that we're trying to mask. And at the moment, we're moving the rectangle just inside this, but we're not moving it inside this one. And the way it's defined at the moment is it's split into two like that. But what I think it should be to make this work is this one here, but then this one here as well. So these these two overlap. So there's this area here where it's inside both of the rectangles. Uh, and then that way the, 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 it can transition between this one and this one. Um, now, in order to make this work, what do I need to do? I need to work out which rectangle it should be locking to. So how do we de decide what rectangle? So say I'm here, I'm inside this one, but I'm not inside this one. So obviously it should be locking to this one. But if I'm here, I'm inside them both. So which one does it lock to? Well, actually, it doesn't really matter which one it locks to, because if it locks to this one, it's still going to mask me. If it locks to this one, it's going to mask me. The problem comes is when I cross this boundary here. So when I when I am partly inside this one here, so say I'm at this location here, 
when I'm halfway between this one and this one. I'm half inside the the original rectangle, and I'm inside this one as well. So it, you have to, it has to be one that you're fully inside, I guess. Oh, that's it. You just need to be fully inside it. Okay, let's try this out. So first, let's go into our areas uh, and add this this one as well. So at the moment, um, it's set in a position here, but it's doing a width of four and a height of two. So it's stopping before this one. So I'm going to change this now to have a height of six. So now these two areas are overlapping. So we're creating that overlap that I've just described down here. Where, oh, wherever the hell that's gone. I don't know where I put that now here. So then I think all I need to do is if, if we're fully inside, then we can skip this completely. So So what we do is if okay, we, we need to do a count here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use am I using Y at all here? I am not brilliant. So what I'm gonna do is at the beginning of each one here, we're gonna set the Y to zero. And what we're gonna do is if if we're fully inside horizontally, we're gonna increment the y if we're fully inside vertically we're going to increment the y and then if at the end the value is two in y then we just break out of the loop completely we're completely inside a rectangle so we know we can we know we can use that rectangle to to do the masking so where is our fully inside check so this is where we are fully inside here this is a clamp, this is fully inside. So we will increment the Y here. And we do the same in this one here. And then that means when we get to here, we can just say compare Y to two. And if it is equal, skip entire loop. Okay. Okay, let's let's try that. I, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into... Uh, where the hell was it? Was it in this one? Was it in this one? It was the beginning of the player, wasn't it? I'm going to set them both to appear on top, and I'm going to set the colour back to red again so we can see what's going on. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? Uh, okay, so we've got a branch that's too long, so it's fine to be expected. Oops. So invert the loop, point it ahead, jump. I mean, it's, yeah, whatever, he'll do. Well, I have no idea if this is going to work. It feels in my head, it feels like it should work, but I'm not convinced a hundred percent. So let's have a look. Yep. Yeah, so that's following us along correctly. When we hit the edge, it's masking us, and it should follow us up. Hopefully, but it's not doing. You see how it stopped following us up? Okay. So at this point, it's saying. I've checked the first rectangle uh, and I deemed that this should go here, uh, but I'm not checking the second rectangle at all for some reason. Let's have a look why. Uh... Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a breakpoint here just to make sure that we actually get to that second check. Uh, 
Is there a list of songs? Yeah, so there's a website called DeepSid. Uh, you can find songs on there, uh, and then you can you can add them um, through the channel points. It's really no excuse, Sean. You should know. <laughs> Okay, let's go off the screen and come back on so it can be initialized. Okay, so it's definitely getting to that. It's definitely checking the second one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to make a note of that value there. 3AFA. So, so I can see if I can trigger it again when I go in here. So there we go. Right, so now I'm inside. Uh, so I'm going to watch... 40 sec. Oh, it's there above me anyway. 385A. There we go. Okay, so if I'm inside. Okay. So it seems if I hit the edges, if I hit some kind of border, and then it starts thinking about the other rectangle. So if I'm if I'm there, it will think about it. if I just nudge it slightly to there. God, there we go. It's fine. And there, as soon as I as soon as I leave the boundaries, it, it thinks about the second rectangle. So that bit's working. It is. It is correctly going into the the second check. But why is it not adjusting to it? Okay, let me let me flip the the areas around. X Y X Y. Should be fine. They're, they're definitely passing areas. Uh, I'm gonna have to go. In fact, give me a few minutes, guys. I just need to go to the toilet. Be right back. Uh, two minutes. There we go. I'm back. Did Mayhem win again? I call mayhem for nothing. He's got the highest chance of winning. It made sense, really. Ooh, what's that? That looks familiar. Oh, uh, yeah. need someone to get it. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, okay. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, let's quickly check. So what have I done? Oh, re yeah. Reverse those two areas around. So I don't think it's going to matter though. I think it just means it's going to lock to one and not the other one. I don't think it's. I don't think it's using the second one, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, see, it's locking to that top one now and not the bottom one. But I'm just wondering what happens if we go... Oh, see, it is... Oh, no, see, it's locked to the bottom. And now it locks to the top. Okay. Yeah, so it's just using whatever the first rectangle is and not the second one. Okay. Um, in that case, we need to be... Do we need to actually lock anything in here if we're... Let's have a think about this. So, so we would come in and we check, are we within the rectangle? <laughs> so, <laughs> cheers, Dogster. 
I'd be all right at a quiz, I think, mainly because I put them all in there. So they're all games that I either know or have seen at some point. So, oh, steps. <laughs> <laughs> Steps is going to actually end on the right amount. This is so funny. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, this is so this is so crazy. You were almost at zero before. <sighs> this is just... Jeez. Okay, so... Uh, what was I doing? Okay, so... First rectangle check whether we're inside it if we are inside it then we don't do anything we move on to the uh that's it we just place the sprite and move on however if we are not inside it fully then we move on to the second rectangle ah here we go here we go this is the problem it should be comma x and then not that's why hey cosmin yeah giving away uh let's say it again giving away three pi 400 um start kits on saturday uh compo but that's for um that's i mean this one yeah that's for the charity company it's not for the giveaway yeah there you go all right let's uh let's double check this i think this is right now i think i was just uh, because I was using the uh, comma X, it was picking the wrong thing. So hopefully now, yeah, follow, follow, follow. No, it doesn't follow on the second. See now, no, it now it's only following the second one. Hmm. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. So what I need to do is only apply the position once I've once I've gone through the entire table. So so what I need to do is uh, I'm going to create mask X. Need to check how many zero because I'm using quite a lot of zero page here for this. Uh, oh, actually, it's not that much, it's fine. So, we're going to store the value in here and override it if we need to override it. So, it gets, gets a little bit tricky here. So that would be at the end of this entire loop here. We would then take mask x plus zero, store that at. This is brilliant tune, the Arcanoi tune. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's a really, really good tune, this. <laughs> the combo info is all game. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even I miss that one. All games are suddenly used Mary just as a prime number. <laughs> it's not as complicated as you make it sound. It's really not that complicated. Yeah, the giveaway info is wrong there. I'd ignore that one. Uh, but it is... Um, well, once, you understand, once you understand the requirements, it's actually very simple. 
um, but I'm not going to keep repeating it. I, I will do um, I will do uh, a document sometime um, soon with with information about it. Okay, so what we're saying is we need to store it in this this mask position here. Oh, actually, do we, uh, let, let's let's store it. Let's work work through this. Just trying to work out how this is actually overwrite because the 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 logic behind multiple areas like this is slightly complicated. I think the problem is is if we do lock it to an edge here. It's because we're skipping it completely. Whereas if I get rid of that, we shouldn't be skipping it at all. Uh, so let's just get rid of that and let's get rid of that and see what happens. Anyway, we should be skipping it, but I mean we shouldn't be uh, we shouldn't be placing it somewhere if if we're not within the area. So now it's not going to follow us until we go in the area. So it all make it all makes sense eventually. So yeah, so it's not there at all until we hit the area or close enough to the area. So now it's decided it can follow us. There we go. See now it's it's moving between the two rectangles. Perfect. Okay, cool. Let's put that back to be in behind and then let's set the color back to zero let's get rid of these now these don't need to be so it's it's simplified the code a little bit um, and there's still things i can do to optimize it but actually i don't think that's too bad and it kind of works all right i'm kind of pleased with how that works actually So the only thing that needs to be done here is if the rectangular area that we're in um, is thinner or, or, or uh, yeah, thinner, uh, either vertically or horizontally, uh, than uh, a sprite, then the, 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 size of the, um, the size of the mask needs to be changed to match. But that's... Uh, I'll do that when we come to that. I don't think it's an issue right now, uh, but hopefully now we can go in here and be masked, which we are. And when I go up, we're still masked. Uh, there is the mask does disappear as we get to the edge of the screen, but um, I'm not massively fussed about that right now. The fact that it's masking is is brilliant. Cool. Uh. Wow, that was a that was a quick tune. <laughs> okay, um I would advise people not to waste their um points now because uh oh my god, how many points have you got now, steps? <laughs> uh okay so you you need to scrounge a little bit but okay i'm 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 pleased with that that code that's i mean it's taken most of the stream which is what three hours but uh considering what it's doing it, it's kind of nice and it is following me around properly which is which I'm, I'm really pleased with 
Uh, so it does create the illusion that, um, you know, that I am properly going behind it. Whereas before it could have, I could have been on top or, or behind it. It didn't really make any sense. Whereas now the black areas actually look like this, this is different to the background, even though they're both black, it is actually a solid thing that we can't see through anymore. So there is a little bit of a clipping issue down here. Looks like the sprite isn't going all the way down. It's not a massive issue because uh, it's going to happen one side or the other anyway. So okay, I, I may may revisit that at some point. And and there's only the issue with the moving off the the screen because of the way that the, uh, the mask is not going to move with the screen. So um, so either we need to make that mask move with the screen. Or we just need to turn the sprite off until uh, turn the player sprite off until we've moved into the screen. Okay, cool. So um, I think that's probably going to be it for this stream. Um, I'm just going to quickly play a little bit just to make sure I haven't broken anything else. So uh, on the next check and I stream, which will probably be next year now, um, I say I'm not guaranteeing it will be next year. It might be. Well, I guarantee there'll be a stream next year, obviously, but I, I'm not going to guarantee that. The, uh, the next check and stream will be next year. There may be one more this year, um, but I'm I'm kind of favoring the idea of having having a week or two off. So, um, oh, there's this there's this weird bug down here as well. It's just it's it's obviously to do with sprites, uh, not resetting properly for some reason. Yeah, this is, I mean, a few minor issues here and there. Oh, there's some color RAM that's not being cleared there. You can see the bullets are going red. Uh, not a huge issue, though. I wonder if that's the same over here as well. Or if it's just because I've got close to it and then shot it. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're I think we're in a pretty good good situation for um the next time we start uh thanks soy random um for the follow you catch me just as i'm about to end end the stream though so um steps is on twenty thousand. all right yeah <laughs> as i remember so um yeah i'll let i'll let the quiz and race play out so um and say so there isn't going to be gambling there's not going to be any dueling there's not going to be any uh any gamble um the only way you will be able to gain points on the next stream will be through the quiz and through the race which will happen half as often so there'll, there'll only be um two races two quizzes and one race every hour um at least until the the, the giveaways are done and so just a reminder i know i've said it about 20 times tonight but i'm going to say it again i'll be giving away three of these uh, Pi 400 starter kits uh, that comes with an SD card, uh, comes with a power supply, comes with the cables and a mouse that you need in order to to start set it up. So three of those will be given away um, on Saturday. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, thanks for the resub, Microman. Eight months, wow. Time flies, man. Time really flies. Let's see. Can Can somebody get some more? points before the weekend what the hell is that oh is that like... i know what it looks like but oh. <laughs> <laughs> i was waiting for somebody to get it oh poor Hayes. Is there a hypnosis wheel on the wall? What do you mean? Because I'm staring up. As my monitor's up there, that's why. Uh, I'll let the race finish out, uh, and then and I'll call it a night. It's Dizzy Panic on the box. Is it? It's probably just the way the box is 
is laid out. I'm pretty sure it's called Panic Dizzy. Oh yeah, it says Dizzy Panic on the box. Yeah, he's he's right. But it's which one is it? I wonder. Wikipedia calls it Dizzy Panic as well. Interesting. And then Spectrum Computing calls it Panic Dizzy. Okay, maybe I should change that to accept both. I guess. Uh... Yeah, dizzy, dizzy panic and panic. Yeah, I think it should accept both. I think, I think that's probably. Actually, I can't, I can't dish points out to the leaderboard, unfortunately. Uh... Turrican won. Oh, did anybody bet on Turrican? Did anybody get a last minute win on Turrican? All right, cool. Let's leave, let's leave it there then. Let's. Uh... Uh, yeah, I guess I could add some points in the DB. I think you're you're far enough in the lead. It's not going to matter. The last the last stream is probably going to be uh, Saturday anyway, so I think you pretty much won. Um. I'll announce on Saturday. I've got an idea what what to give away. It's only a small prize, but um, I'll, I'll I'll speak to you on Saturday about it. Assuming somebody doesn't come out and beat you from behind, so I doubt it though. Considering the uh, it's going to be slowed right down. Uh, so we've got Duke on. We've got Zypho on. Um, Moonbeams on. Duke's the only one playing. I assume he's going to be playing. Oh, he's playing Tetris. Oh, all right, let's go and let's go and raid Duke then. Uh, good pro. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased that it was only a small thing tonight, but um, that masking is a huge part of the the game. There's loads of places that are masked like that, so having that in place is is a real nice win, um, and it looks nice as well. It does. Just create a kind of slightly more, um, slightly more visually advanced look to it than than not having that mask in. So very pleased with that. Uh, cool. Uh, that's it then for tonight. I shall see you all on Saturday for the giveaway. I'm really excited about it. You get to see me in a Santa hat and a red T-shirt as well. Uh, I may even say ho 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 a few times. Um, looking forward to it. It's going to be good. So. Um, Thanks, guys. Let's go and raid Duke now. He's playing Tetris, I think. Uh, and I shall see you on Saturday. Take care. Bye.